now, a one of a series of uh, ten figures, these three women are the last of a series of ten uh, agricultural field workers, commissioned by uh, Chris Bunn from Crown Packing to pay tribute to the labor force in the ag industry. When I was first commissioned, he said, uh, use your own people. I said, well, you, it'll be more intimate and you'll get a more kick out of it if you use your own people. So he he relented and I used some of his uh, farm, farm workers and now, boy, I hear stories of one of these guys who comes out here and cleans it off every couple of weeks and they're all proud of it. And it turns out to be a good thing. Well, I do work with another artist named Dong Sun Kim. Uh, he's a great painter and we, we'll collaborate on some of these giant figures, but the whole, the whole, the, the whole cutout concept is kind of something I slowly evolved for me. In small little elements in some of my works from several years ago to now to the point where I won't necessarily need a wall anymore as most traditional mural painters will use, will need. I'll just use a field because I think that the background, the, the beautiful Flames Valley, I can't do any better than the backgrounds that these things automatically give to my figures. They're all stuck in concrete four and a half, five foot down in the ground with a four by six pressure treated post. Uh, but when you, they aren't really sales so much. When you think of a billboard, a billboard is a big rectangular, it does almost appear to be a sale. These things have holes in them wherever I can, and they're actually fairly thin. And if you, I'm really more concerned about facing them toward the highway. Sometimes I'm facing them in the worst position for the wind, but I put metal poles in the back of them to secure them to the ground. Never had any of them uh, fall down. And if you look at them, during a really good gust of wind, you'll see them move, but it would take a really, really, I think it would take a hurricane to knock them down. Um, sometimes I'll need help with some of these 24 foot poles, but uh, I really want to be part of every part of it. I want to prime the wood, I want to cut the wood, I want to be there the day it goes up, because I don't get to see it all together until the day it's up, because they're in my shop in several pieces, and I can't possibly lay them all out to see them. So I finally get to see them. I can see the head next to the shirt sometimes, but I'll never see the whole head, shirt, pants, shoes together until I get to see them. So I'm, I get a thrill out of seeing it all together finally the day I get to put it up. And one of my early projects was a, a barn showing a, a, an old ballpark, vintage 1950s, uh, 40s, on Highway 1, uh, just outside of Aromas. And I, to make money on the project, I was selling outdoor ad space on the outside, on the outfield walls of the ballpark. I had put them up and then Caltrans had an investigator out one day to realize that it was a zone commercial. I was, in essence, building a, a, a billboard on the highway. And you can't just go out there and put up your billboards without paying a permit. And in this case, I couldn't even purchase a permit because it wasn't zoned commercial. Lost a lot of money on the deal. Got me a little notoriety. I had people pulling for me, but the bottom line is I really should have done my homework. And uh, now I realize you can't just put up Acme glass with a big sign in the middle of the highway uh, or on a field next to a highway without making sure that it's zoned properly and by permits. It prevents me from doing a lot of jobs because of that, but uh, Figures like this are more artistic in nature, and uh, there's no problem with that. I never think of a canvas. I always think about how things look in a field next to a highway. So yeah, some, I would hope to someday I would just get rich farmers and landowners who would just give me lots of money, and say, hey, you're half fun with your idea. Maybe we'll sell posters and we'll reap some of the benefits, but yeah, I have a lot of things I want to do that aren't commercial in any nature whatsoever, but that would be very, exciting to see as you're driving down the road going to your uncles or to the market that would look kind of cool but that you know I don't really have I don't think commercially so I don't know how I can make money at it now you deal with legalities in a lot of the, a lot of these things sometimes these things pop up on commercials that no one ever tells you about or album covers or things so I have to pull a copyright symbol on all of them to protect the, the landowner is uh, concerned about it more than I am I kind of I get a kick out of seeing my things on covers of things that I didn't think to ask, well, where's my cut of it and all that. Because I'm just thrilled that people get to see it. Money isn't as important to me, so I don't live really high. You know, those things aren't as important to me. Um, if you're passionate about what you, what you want to do, you'll get there. As I remember in art class, in, in art school, the teacher said 99% of you are just taking this for fun and you'll have you'll dabble in it maybe later in years but very few few of you will make a living at it well I remember ignoring that it went over my head I didn't care because I at the time and I was only a sophomore in college I was fairly certain I was this is what I was gonna do 
So those things didn't scare me. I used to use an enamel paint years ago, and I found out that the flesh tones faded and they started cracking. So some of my early figures, my farmer and farm worker down the, down the road here, I've redone twice. Uh, it's done on plywood, so the life of plywood is seven, eight, nine, ten years, and they'll slowly decompose. Uh, my work will be gone shortly after I'm gone. I realize that's the downfall of being an artist in this kind of medium. They won't last forever, only in books and pictures. Uh, so, but that's okay to me. I'd rather hit a big market, I hit a big uh, audience, and have people see them.